Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Uh, I'm sorry I'm starting just a few minutes behind schedule tonight, but um, I'm going to continue in the study of the book of Proverbs and beginning with chapter 27. If you have not seen the previous studies on Proverbs, uh, they are uploaded and available on my YouTube channel, Sin City Preacher, so I, I hope you will go back and uh, watch it all from the beginning. But right now, uh, let's look at it. Chapter 27, I look at it first in the KJV, and then I'll look at it in the Amplified. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. And in the Amplified, it says, do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. Uh, well, boasting about tomorrow, your I guess that's boasting about your plans for the future. Uh, that That's one thing. Uh, it, it is wise to plan ahead for the future. But I think it's also wise to understand that sometimes the future doesn't come. Uh, the scripture tells us that uh, uh, life is like a vapor. It appears for a short time, then disappears. And it says that... Uh, uh, it is appointed for man once to die and then the judgment. So some, sometimes this life that we expect to be 70 years, more or less, uh, we sometimes it's cut short all of a sudden with no warning. Uh, this is something you need to be aware of. So if there's something you need to take care of in your life, don't put it off till tomorrow. Uh, the most important thing you should not put off is salvation. And if you want to go to heaven, you cannot delay resolving that. And you don't get to heaven because you did a, had a really good life and God judges you and says, oh, yeah, you're good enough. That's not how you do it. You get to heaven simply by trusting the Savior, Jesus Christ. So if you haven't done that, uh, I'm going to urge you right now, just put your faith in Jesus Christ, rely on him to get you into heaven, and he promises you eternal life in heaven if you'll just trust him. So don't put that off till tomorrow. Now, the next verse says, Let another man praise thee, and not thine own mouth, a stranger, and not thine own lips. Uh, in the Amplified, says, let another praise you and not your own mouth, a stranger and not your own lips. So not much difference there, if any. But uh, I think that's pretty self-explanatory, but I don't know if it's that easy for people to heed. Uh, it seems like everybody has an urge to, you know, brag about themselves or talk about themselves. And uh, their scripture also tells us that... Uh, we should spend less time talking and more time listening. Uh, and that uh, um, if, if you uh, if if you brag about yourself, and even Jesus, he said that it's not me that's testifying about myself, uh, but the Holy Spirit, John the Baptist, and so on. They're testifying about me. Uh, so when somebody else says something good about you, it's much more meaningful to the listener than it is you speaking highly of yourself. It just sounds arrogant, uh, conceited. And that's not really very attractive quality to anybody, I would think. And then the third verse, verse is, A stone is heavy and the sand weighty, but a fool's wrath is heavier than them both. A fool's wrath. Uh, yeah, I saw an example of that earlier today. I was on a hangout with some people, and um, I saw some, some young professing Christian. I personally don't believe he is a Christian because his confession of faith is, is based upon him repenting of sins and changing his life, and it's not based upon faith in Jesus. So I, I would say he's not tr truly a Christian, uh, but... He, he got angry very quickly and uh, a, a fool. He, he's foolish in the respect that uh, he's not wise. A wise person listens to counselors. 
a wise person is teachable. Uh, and so he was foolish and he lost his temper. And it says that right here, that fools, um, they're, they get a fool's wrath is heavier than them both. And that in the Amplified, it says stone is heavy and the sand weighty, but a fool's unreasonable wrath is heavier and more burdensome than both of them. Uh, it is foolish to get angry. Sometimes we, uh, we, we, as human beings, you know, we, we're wired our genetic code and our, we're predisposed to certain kind of personalities, but uh, we, we should try to control our anger. The scripture says that be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Now verse four says, wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous, but who is able to stand before envy? <laughs> uh, so this basically is, is placing envy as even uh, more grievous than cruelty and anger. Um, uh, well, cruelty and anger, uh, usually that is, that's more observable too. Envy, I think, uh, is probably a more of a secret sin. I mean, sometimes uh, when someone is envious, it's obvious to everyone. But oftentimes it's a secret sin. You don't realize that someone is envious. They, they are, and they are tormented by their envy. Uh, so I guess we've all been envious sometimes, though. And uh, if you ever have been envious and you've taken the time to think about it, you know, it's, it's a destructive quality. The next verse says, uh, open rebuke is better than secret love. And in verse, and in the KJV it says, better is an open reprimand of loving correction than love that is hidden. Well, love that is hidden um, doesn't do anybody any good at all. Uh, open rebuke, that's another example of what happened today in an earlier uh, broadcast. Uh, I and, and uh, another brother, we're giving an open rebuke to a false teacher. And uh, he got angry about it. We were courteous. We were, we're um, we didn't uh, call him any names other than, uh, you know, his, his belief is heresy, which is a serious charge, but it was easily proven to be true. So uh, this, I forgot what this verse was now, but it applies to that. Let me go back to it. Oh yeah, open rebuke is better than secret love. So by rebuking him, uh, we did our duty and he could have listened and learned and grown and repented of his false doctrines and embraced the true doctrine that salvation is a free gift from Jesus. Uh, instead, he got angry and would not uh, change his mind. But the, the good thing about it, the open rebuke is, is public. So anybody who watches that, at least maybe someone else will benefit by, by observing the rebuke of the, this heretic. Uh, and now the next one is verse uh, 6. Faithful are the wounds of a friend but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Well, it, at, at first glance, it may sound bad, that faithful are the wounds of a friend. Uh, let me see how it's phrased in the Amplified. It says, faithful are the wounds of a friend who corrects out of love and concern. And this, this pertains to the, the previous verse, I think. And it, if someone, um, if, when, if we rebuke someone, and we do it out of love and concern for our friend, and we want to correct them, <clears throat> that's faithful. That's a good thing to do. But it says, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Yeah, and uh, that's that's another thing that you see sometimes too. 
people that are deceitful. And um, so always be very, very cautious. Uh, you may be getting kisses from an enemy. You may be getting flattered by someone that's really deceitful and is going to stab you in the back. Uh, it says, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful because they serve his hidden agenda. Let's go to verse uh, 7 in the KJV. It says, the full soul loatheth an, a honeycomb, but to the hungry... Uh, but to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Uh, if you're full, full of food, I mean, you've just ate and your appetite's completely satisfied. And let's say you're, you ate and you're stuffed. Even though a honeycomb is so desirable, you don't want to have anything to do with it. You've, you're, you're full. You're, you're stuffed. You just, even the thought of something as sweet as honeycomb, you just don't want it. It's not appealing until you get hungry. But it says, but to the hungry soul, the hungry person, Every bitter thing is sweet. Even the, the, a bitter food, you're happy to get it. Now, verse 7 in the Amplified says, He who is satisfied loathes honey, but to the hungry soul, any bitter thing is sweet. Uh, yeah, you really, I actually, you really do appreciate things too. It, when, you, when you lack, then the slightest little thing is greatly appreciated. When you have an abundance in your life, and sometimes it's easy to go the other way and uh, make the mistake of taking everything for granted and not being thankful. Um, verse 8 in the KJV says, As a bird that wandereth from her nest, so is a man that wandereth from his place. Hmm. Uh, I don't know how that can be taken to be a bad thing. If it is, let me let me see how it expressed in the Amplified. Maybe it'll help. Like a bird that wanders from her nest with its comfort and safety, so is a man who wanders from his home. In other words, uh, you know, our home is a uh, we 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 feel comfortable and secure in our homes. Hopefully, uh, and when we get away from the home, then life becomes a little more worrisome because we don't know what is out there. We know that safety is within these walls. And just like a bird is feels safe and comfortable in his nest, but as soon as they wander from the nest, then they may, need to worry because there may be another bird of prey coming to pounce on them. So I guess uh, we should, uh, ideally, we should feel comfortable in our homes you know, the idea of home sweet home. Um, even if you travel and, and to do a, an absolutely fantastic vacation, there comes a point where you're just happy to get home uh, and where everything is right where you want it, just like you want it. And you can get sit in your comfortable chair and everything is comfortable, comfortable, you feel secure. So um, if you don't have that, uh, I'm, I'm very sorry you don't. I, I pray that you will have that and that feel comfortable and secure in a home. Now, the next verse is um, verse 9 in the KJV. It says, ointment and perfume rejoice the heart, so doth the sweetness of a man's friend by hearty counsel. Hmm. So I'm going to have to read that in the Amplified to see if it's who's receiving the counsel here. Verse 9, the Amplified says, Oil and perfume make the heart glad. So does the sweetness of a friend's counsel that comes from the heart. Well, that's true if you have the right attitude. Um, if you appreciate a friend giving you heartfelt counseling, if you're wise, the Proverbs also says, a wise man has many counselors. Uh, a wise man is a good listener. And, and, and if you have a friend that cares enough about you that they're going to give you heartfelt counsel, then, uh, you know, if you're wise, you'll appreciate it. But many people don't want counsel. That's their ego. They don't want to be instructed or corrected by someone else. The next verse in the KJV uh, 
uh, thine own friend and thy father's friend forsake not, neither go into thy brother's house in the day of thy calamity, for better is a neighbor that is near than a brother far off. <laughs> yeah. So in other words, don't forsake establishing friendships. Um, uh, you be, it, it's be more helpful to you to have a neighbor and your friends with your neighbor and something happens, maybe he can help. Whereas if you don't have any friends and the only one that can help you is your family and, but they are not nearby, what good is it? Let me see how it's phrased in the, uh, amplified. Do not abandon your own friend and your father's friend and do not go to your brother's house in the day of your disaster. Uh, better is a neighbor who is near than a brother who is far away. All right, verse 11 in the KJV is, My son, be wise and make heart and make my heart glad that I may answer him that reproacheth me. That I may answer him that reproacheth me. Well, I'm going to need the Amplify to help me understand that one. It says, A prudent man sees evil and hides himself and avoids it. Uh, but the naive who are easily, oops. I read the wrong verse, 11, verse 11. My son, be wise and make my heart glad that I may reply to him who reproaches or reprimands and criticizes me. Hmm. I really don't understand this in any either of these translations. Let me read it one more time in the Amplified. My son, be wise and make my heart glad that I may reply to him who reproaches me, reprimands me. All right. Well, you're on your own to figure that one out. Let's go to verse 12 in the KJV. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. But the simple pass on and are punished. Well, uh, I'm 65, but for much of my life, you know, I've I've practiced martial arts, taught martial arts, I've owned and operated martial arts schools, and the uh, the, the, the I've always taught that uh, the the first step, the first stage of, of self-defense is learning how to avoid a conflict. And one way you avoid it is that you recognize uh, to not be in dangerous places. And if you are, that you're alert and aware. Yeah. For example, someone said, hey, Luke, when's the last time you uh, had to use your martial arts? And I said, well, I, I did it tonight when I pulled into the parking lot. I parked under the light, the lighted area. And they said, well, how does that? Well, it's because part of self-defense is, is, is uh, avoiding the conflict. And if, you, if, you're, uh, if you're oblivious and naive and just park anywhere, then you're leaving yourself vulnerable for attack. See, the, the criminals, the boogeyman, he's in the dark. That's where they want to attack you, in the dark. So... I think this is important to understand that if you're wise, you'll be able to try to prevent a problem from happening. A prudent man foreseeth the evil. I know that if I'm going into a bad area of town or if I'm in, pulling into a particular area where uh, I, I'm, I'm using my discernment and I'm making judgments that way, I think something's a little off here. I'm going to have my guard up. I'm going to be ready and alert. Uh, Verse 13 in the KJV is, take his garment that is surety for a stranger and, and take a pledge of him for a strange woman. <laughs> oh, God. All right. I don't know how those things are connected. Let's see that in the, in the Amplified. It says, the judge tells the creditor. Okay. Now, I, immediately it makes sense. The judge tells the creditor, take the garment of the one who is surety uh, who guarantees the loan for a stranger and, and hold him in pledge when he is surety 
for an immoral woman, for it is unlikely the debt will be repaid. It also says many times in Proverbs that uh, do not uh, co-sign on loans, do not offer uh, surety for others. So if you want to do that, if you want to get a loan for someone else in your name, uh, be prepared for it not to work out and you regret it. Now, the next verse in the KJV, verse 14 He that blesseth his friend with a loud voice, rising early in the morning, it shall be counted a curse to him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Even if you're trying to do something good uh, uh, to bless your friend, if you wake him up too early, uh, he's not going to be happy about it. Let me read the, in the Amplified. He who blesses his neighbor with a loud voice early in the morning it will be counted as a curse to him, for it will either be annoying or his purpose will be suspect. Yeah, purpose will be suspect. Yeah, maybe he's coming over with a loud voice, waking you up too early, not being considerate and respectful of, of you, your life and your schedule, disrupting it. And then why is he there? Maybe he's coming there because he wants you to bail him out of trouble. So verse 15 in the KJV is a continual dropping in a ra very rainy day and a contentious woman are alike. <laughs> Solomon has quite a few verses in throughout all the Proverbs about a uh, contentious woman, uh, even a contentious wife. Uh, if, you have a con if you have a contentious wife, She's always nagging. It's like the rain pounding down relentlessly. He also says it's, it's better to live in a small room in an attic alone than in a large mansion with the contentious woman or a nagging wife. It's better to live alone in the wilderness with nothing than in a palatial mansion with a nagging wife. These are various ways that Solomon expresses that if you have a, a nagging woman, who's contentious. I would say it's true about if you have a friend that's nagging like that too, but <clears throat> Solomon had a thousand wives. So I'm sure he uh, he's thinking of it in terms of a contentious woman because he had to deal with that. Now the next verse, verse 16, 